Francisco. Well, it's a place uh, that says a lot about John Glenn. Ohio is a place that says a lot about astronauts. I'm told that Ohio has more astronauts than any other state. 23 astronauts have hailed from the Buckeye State. Jeff Flock is in New Concord. Maybe he has an answer to the question, why? You why gotta, Ohio? You've got to be awfully careful about that. Excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. Walter Miles, we've got uh, probably a room full of astronauts this morning. I am standing where 60 years ago John Glenn sat. Instead of on the launch pad, it was here in this classroom. This is now New Concord Elementary School instead of New Concord High, which it was when John Glenn was here. And we've got a classroom full of fourth graders that are pretty excited about what's going on down in Florida today. And I, I guess I would ask you guys first, why are you excited? John? Because... John Glenn's going to be the oldest person to go up in space. Why else? Why else are people excited about John Glenn's launch today? Chelsea? Um, because he used to go here, and he's, a, and he's a, really a good role, role model for us. That's right. He comes back here a lot, I know, to visit. Uh, why else? Yes, Allison, why? Because John Glenn was an American here just by going in space, by orbiting the Earth three times. And now, by being the oldest person in space, he will be a hero again. Wow, that's great. Is anybody worried about John Glenn today? Who's who's worried about John Glenn? I'm afraid that the rocket ship might blow up or something bad might happen. Have you ever seen a rocket blow up before? No. Okay, good. People didn't watch the Challenger. Aaron, why are you concerned? I'm not really concerned um, because most of the rockets nowadays don't explode, and um, and if it even does explode, he's already been a hero, so it, it won't be like his first time trying to be a hero. Anybody else got any concerns about John Glenn today, Hope? Um, I'm worried because if in space, um, I don't know if he can handle the um, non-gravity because he's older than than he was before. Do you think it's neat that somebody older is going up in space? And if so, why? Why, Kelly? He's old. He's 77, right? Yep. Like, do you think that's going to be a problem? No. Yeah. OK. What would you be thinking? I know we were watching the television earlier. What would you be thinking if you were on the launch pad like John Glenn is right now, Greg? Um, how it is going to go when you go up in space. Mm -hmm. You'd be wondering what it was like. What about you, Kim? What would you be thinking right now? I'd be think I'd be really nervous thinking what would happen and yeah who else yeah Tracy what do you think I think it would be exciting because you're going in space and most people don't get to go in space that often would you guys want to go in space would you want to go in space Chelsea yeah and what would you be thinking right now I'd be thinking um, that I hope that the rocket nothing happens to it and I hope that space doesn't affect me because I'm older mm -hmm. Very good. Very good thoughts from the place where John Glenn himself once sat. I don't know if these may be new desks, so he may not have been at these very desks, but in this very room, John Glenn uh, sat here, as we said, 60 years ago. He now sits on a launch pad down there with you folks. We'll all be watching. Jeff, why don't you look under those desks, see if you see something carved in there like Johnny Loves Annie or something. Then you'd know for sure if that was one of the original desks. We might find it there. <laughs> All right, yeah. Jeff Locke in New Concord. Walter? Somebody noted that astronaut Tom Hendricks suggests three reasons why more astronauts have come from Ohio than anywhere else. That uh, role models uh, such as John Glenn and Neil Armstrong set mm -hmm. them all to it. Ohio schools and the Midwestern work ethic. Well, actually, I just heard from a fellow who lives right across the border in Kentucky who said the other reason is that they'll do anything to get out of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the switchboards are lighting up. I don't up. think that's true. That's what they used to say <laughs> about us journalists who left Missouri. <laughs> All right. Walter Cronkite, uh, we'll continue our coverage, of course, uh, of the launch of Discovery, now planned for 2 p.m. Eastern time. As far as we know, it's on time. No problems to report. We're expecting to see the astronauts walking out in their orange suits to that uh, van, which will take them up to the launch pad in just a few moments. And we will come back and bring that to you as soon as it happens. Stay with CNN all day long. Welcome back. You've Thanks, heard those Katie. those words a few hundred times in the past couple of weeks, haven't you? They have uh, a longevity that I sure didn't figure on. We'll talk about them more in just a moment, but I wanted to ask you, Scott, about the space program back in 1962. It seems that few people today have a real appreciation of just how incredibly dangerous it was to get in one of those things. I think it's oversold a little bit. 
first of all we all made it it wasn't dangerous at all the other thing people don't realize is that when you make a decision that you want to do this you do that because you think the benefits are worth the risk and then you forget the risk and is really something you never think about again but having said that i mean when test pilots did get in a space capsule there was a distinct possibility that something would go awry you're being kind of macho about it right now but weren't there very legitimate fears about that yes but you really do put them behind you and it isn't macho it is factual you just maybe you don't think about it as because you can't afford to how has the space program changed in, in your view scott since 1962 I mean, what's the most stunning development as you watch it? We've made great progress, but we've hit some snags here and there. And one of the reasons for that is that we don't have the Soviets to compete with anymore. And that was a major driver in the early days. And that motivation or that motivator is no, no longer exists. No longer exists. And then, too, uh, the novelty has worn off and maybe the excitement that we felt in the early 60s will never return until we send a man to Mars. Back in 1962, I mentioned you were John Glenn's backup. How competitive were the two of you? <laughs> uh, it was uh, substantial, but it also served a good purpose. It, uh, we were like the Musketeers. We competed uh, uh, fiercely with each other, but once one person got a flight, we were a team, and we supported that person. When you wished him Godspeed, there was a very important reason for that. You were literally wishing him speed, because speed, and perhaps God, were the two things he needed the most, right? He needed speed, and a big bunch of it in the next five minutes. Speed in the amount uh, 18,000 miles an hour. That's something we had never given a person before. And it occurred to me that since speed was uh, so important to the success of that flight, it wouldn't uh, be uh, inappropriate to make some appeal for that speed. And Godspeed worked out. You'll be revisiting that role today. I will. Are you excited about that? Sure. Have you figured out how you're going to wish the astronauts well? Working on it. <laughs> Do you want to share it with us now? <laughs> no. or shall we wait and find out? If you don't mind. That's fine with us. <laughs> okay. Are you are you going to have any pangs of, of envy as you see him go up there? Oh, sure. Anybody who has flown in space would jump at the chance to revisit that experience. But John's got this flight. I'll wait for the next one. Would you like to do it again? Of course. Wouldn't you? Yeah, actually, I would. <laughs> well, Scott Carpenter, it's great to see you. We'll be listening this afternoon okay. at 2 p.m. Eastern time, okay. and we'll be carrying it live, of course, on NBC. It will hold again for 10 minutes then, allowing the people in the Launch Control Center to uh, get their bearings, make sure they feel confident, make sure they've done all their work before the countdown resumes 10 minutes later at 1.41 p.m. and uh, then w it will go into one more hold. So uh, that's, that's the way that NASA does its math. It's kind of new math. After all, Walter, it is rocket science, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. You know, uh, Miles, uh, th there is another hole built in today, as you, as you noted probably before, but we might uh, reiterate. The, uh, the, this is the typical of the kind of things that happen as they move into the countdown, into the preparation of the, of the launch site and the uh, vehicle itself. Uh, they found uh, yesterday, as they were running through some drills, uh, that an actuator indicator, just an indicator, on one of the engines was not reading properly as it should read. Uh, they think they've licked the problem. They don't see any real problem anyway. If the actuator doesn't have any major function to play itself, so that is, the indicator doesn't. The actuator does, but the indicator is what's wrong. But just to be sure, this is the way they operate, they have built in a hold at T minus two minutes so uh, that that they would hold at that time to be sure that this actuator is working the if 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 uh, if they don't need it if they think they've solved the problem by then uh, the the time that this actuator has been built in to cut off the launch 
is T minus 31 seconds. That T minus 31 seconds is now in the clock. If that indicator from the actuator does not work from the engine, the whole thing will stop at 31 seconds before launch until that is fixed, which may require even taking it back to the VAB. You never know what it'll take. That's but, it. but at T minus two, if everything's working well, they'll cancel that T minus 31 and the launch will go ahead. As we look at some pictures of the crowds, media, some probably some uh, NASA employees, maybe a couple of family members there as we are outside the operations and checkout facility here at the Kennedy Space Center. You can see to the left the van which will carry the seven-member crew off to the launch pad roughly four miles from where that building sits.